studio as the mayor of Common Senseville, Call Larry Adi, owner of Pro Basement for all your basement waterproofing and basement finishing needs. 314 222 9600. The Lightning Round, brought to you by Hair Saloon, because sometimes the man everyone depends on needs a place of his own to depend on every time he sits in one of their chairs. Hair Saloon, for men against the grain. Visit hairsaloon.com for a saloon near you. Almond in the Morning. Sense Radio. Don't forget, April 6th, Thursday, April 6th, at the Foundry Arts Center, Main Street, St. Charles, Almond in the Evening, featuring Todd Starnes, 971talk.com slash Almond. Todd will have his new book available for purchase, Resist We Munch shirts available for 10 bills, and it's going to be fun. Well, Stephen Hawking has spoken about President Trump. And keep in mind, Stephen Hawking is one of those guys, like, if he likes Reese's peanut butter cups and you don't, you're a horrible person. (laughs) That's kind of where Stephen Hawking is. Like, if you you, disagree with him, you're probably a horrible man Mm -hmm. or a woman, you know? And since he's apparently the master of the universe or whatever, (laughs) they interview him and, of course, Stephen Hawking has spoken here. You're a man who knows the universe well. How do you explain the phenomenon of Donald Trump? He is a demagogue who seems to appeal to the lowest common denominator. That's me! Nice. (laughs) The lowest common denominator. Thank you, Mr. Hawking, or Dr. Hawking, or whoever you are. I still don't even get who he is, but anyway. (laughs) I honestly do. I, 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 I see him. I hear him. I know about him. Who he is, yeah. But never really, never really got into. Never Stephen really Hawking. found out like what his deal is. <laughs> I do know that if you don't like what he has to say, you're horrible. So I know yeah, that you're screwed. <laughs> Speaking of horrible, uh, the people behind President Trump last night at speech in Kentucky were driving me crazy. You could tell there are a couple of people who probably voted for Ted Cruz who were somehow these Kentucky Republicrats who were behind him there. One guy had his clothes pose going and checking his iPhone for tweets with his sour wife or whoever she was next to him. I screen grabbed a couple of things, put them up there on Twitter for you. And I'm telling you, I watched this thing. and I felt so bad because President Trump's working so hard and trying to be so earnest and connecting with the people. And you had these two people behind him, these two jokers, mm-hmm. uh, just uh, it just to their phone. It was driving me nuts. And as I said on Twitter, I was having some very unchristian thoughts about <laughs> what to do with them. But then I realized it was Lent, so I just wanted to kill them. <laughs> oh, jeez. It's Lent. Ladies and gentlemen, Senator Roy Blunt at Roy Blunt, blunt.senate.gov. Senator, thank you so much for calling into the show, my friend. How you doing? Hey, Jamie. Great to be with you this morning. Yes. Lots- that would be a good idea. Just. Just some friendly advice. Give up all your homicidal, uh, homicidal <laughs> thoughts. I mean, no, I know. It's, it's easy to be frustrated right now. There's no doubt about it. I know. No, I was just kidding about that. But these people were like, <laughs> you know, it, it, it was seriously thinking about killing. Them. <laughs> no, I was just, they were driving oh, I, me crazy. I, I, so, Senator, a couple of things going on here. First of all, we have the uh, intelligence hearings yesterday. What was your takeaway from uh, Director Comey's appearance? You know, I haven't understood anything Director Comey's done for about a year now. Uh, and, uh, you know, clearly his purpose there was to disclose an investigation uh, but then not to suggest that there, you need to do everything possible to get through this investigation as quickly as possible. The, the idea that, well, these investigations take a long time, maybe on average that's true. This one shouldn't take a day longer than is necessary, and we need to have all of the resources that are available to close the chapter here. We need to find out what happened, when it happened, if it had any, if there's any further action that needs to be taken, if anything did happen, and then move on. You know, the idea that somehow 
these investigations take a long time. Uh, according to the FBI director, they've been looking at this since July. Uh, so we're in more than half a year already spent on this, and uh, nobody seems to have come up with any any collusion between the campaign and what the Russians were doing. Uh, I think we need to figure out what the Russians did. We need to figure out how we can um, protect ourselves against that and even more in the future. The one thing nobody thinks the Russians did was get into the vote counting system anywhere, but as a you know, former chief election official and local elect in our state and local election official, uh, we need to be absolutely sure that uh, we're protecting these counting systems in the future. Uh, but the, the goal of the moment should be to find out everything you need to know and determine where that leads you. That's why uh, a month ago I said we ought to exhaustively uh, look into everything, talk to anybody a reasonable person thinks should be talked to, look at everything a reasonable person thinks you should look at, uh, and um, get all the facts on the table because there's important work for the country and the president to do. And right. I believe he's trying to do that important work. Yeah, I'm with you, though. I don't understand how long something like this takes. You'd think you'd be able to find out one way or the other pretty quickly. Now, speaking of that hard work, of course, yesterday, last night, President Trump in Kentucky, obviously Senator McConnell's home turf and Senator Paul's home turf, and he's got uh, quite a job to do in trying to uh, see if he can move this uh, repeal and replace plan uh, along. What's your take on it? How are you planning on accepting it? What's up? Well, you know, obviously we ought to look at the final bill that the House uh, passes, but uh, I, I, my strong inclination is to do whatever's necessary to get Obamacare behind us, uh, to get step one out of the way that sets a deadline for uh, the end of Obamacare, uh, and um, then let the Secretary of Health and Human Services do his job. There are about 1,440 places in the Obamacare bill that leave it up to bureaucrats to make it make decisions that determine what the bill really means as it turns out right now the top bureaucrat on that chain is a person I have a lot of confidence in who's been fighting uh, the foolishness of the direction we went in health care for a long time and so what can you do in those 1400 places to determine uh, how people have a better chance to buy insurance that they want that they think covers their family's needs at a price that they can afford to pay. But Obamacare is a disaster in our state. There are only 97, uh, there are 97 counties of 115 that only one company is willing to offer insurance in. The deductible is too high. The monthly premium is too high. And, uh, uh, people don't have the kind of coverage that they can afford. I think we can do something about that. But step one is to move on from Obamacare uh, and then find the ways that we can replace that system where people have more choices. And do you believe uh, Senator Paul's main criticism is that it's not doing what the intention is, which is that it's not a repeal uh, and, and and it's it's more just like Obamacare 2.0. Have you discussed that with him, or how do you feel about what he has to say about that? Well, well, I have, I have, and you, you know, a 51 vote solution at this moment is not a perfect solution because it only has to deal with budgetary issues. So if it has to be written in a way that you're talking about taxes, and by the way, this eliminates a uh, trillion dollars, uh, 880 billion dollars in taxes. And eliminates trillion dollars in spending, uh, and those are the kinds of the only kinds of things you can talk about at, at this moment with fifty-one votes. So I, right. I think that the House members and uh, senators ultimately are trying to do everything they can to do what's possible uh, and move on to step two, which is letting the Secretary of Health and Human Services do his job, and then step three is finding the things that need to be done that fill in the gaps, and that's going to take Democrats and Republicans. 
Yeah, no doubt about that. All right, Senator Blunt, always good to talk to you. Now, uh, you are also exp- I want I, I, you have a news release out here that I th- I think is great because it's a local angle here. So uh, the uh, there's an expansion of basic combat training uh, at Fort Leonard Wood. What's that about? Well, I think what we're seeing is you know Fort Leonard Wood has uh, more opportunities for all of the services. Uh, there, there are more joint service trainings at Fort Leonard Wood, I believe, than any other uh, base in the country. Uh, and as we look toward more uh, troops in the military, that fundamental original um, uh, mission of Fort Leonard Wood,